Hello there and welcome to The Harvest Show on this Wednesday, August the 1st. We have a great show for in store you today. In store for you today, my name is Drew, that's Chuck, Valerie, and Stefan. And guys, I had some things I wanted to talk about, and then after really thinking about it, I changed my mind. But before we get to that, <laughs> I, I real quick, I just, I don't normally do this. Okay. But I just, I thought this was kind of humorous to me, so I wanted to read it. And I absolutely appreciate that people write in, and I just wanted to mention this email just because I thought it was interesting. This is from uh, Jay Wilson. It says, uh, hooray for Valerie and, and Drew. Drew gets nervous if he's not allowed to constantly interrupt. I've never seen a Christian TV host act ruder or more dishonoring to guests that he does not agree with. So I actually went back because I just, I felt like I didn't really say much. So I went back and watched and actually yesterday's segment was mm -hmm. eight minutes long and I spoke for a minute, six seconds. There you go. I just wanted to make mention of that. However, we have a great topic today that I thought it kind of goes along with our conversation yesterday. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, but a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. And for folks at home, I'd love to hear what you have to say as well. We're going to kind of ask some questions here, and we want to know what you think live at LaCie.com. And the first question that I have, and like I said, it kind of goes along with the Chick-fil-A thing, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. For a Christian, what does it mean for us to stand up for what you believe in? We'll let Stefan go first. Okay. Uh, to stand up for what you believe in means to, to me, live your faith out mm -hmm. regardless of the consequences. Uh, not necessarily to be a protester of this or that on, be, on, the, on a cause or case for others, but to make your point known and to live your life in obedience to God's word and God's leading, regardless of where the chips may fall. Mm -hmm. He took the words right out of my mouth. No, th you can't all just no, agree no, no, with each but other. But that's exactly what I believe. I, when I read the question, when you uh, sent them to the questions to us, uh -huh. I said to myself, oh, I just believe it's living out your, that you're walking out your faith. The Bible says that we're supposed to be living epistles. Mm -hmm. And I think people are much more impressed with what we do than what we say. Mm -hmm. And so when I live that out, um, sometimes it's an offense to the world. Sometimes, um, you know, I, I don't have to suffer as much for what I believe. Mm -hmm. But there are many times when I express what I believe or my actions say this is what I believe, um, I'm certainly, you know, I, I get a mouthful about it. I yeah. mean, you know, I know I have friends who are not believers. I have friends who don't believe the way I do and they're Christians. But I still walk that out. So that's what I think. Okay. And I think in standing up for our faith, when we do admonish somebody or we do speak up about injustice, it's important that we need to do it from the standpoint of our actions and our words still need to advocate the position of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We Excellent. still need to take a position and take a way of expressing our opinion that conveys the love that Christ has for one another. So in essence, uh, you know, let, let's use the Chick-fil-A thing for an example, okay. if, I'm, if I'm speaking up, first of all, I'm trying to support a brother in Christ and Don Cathy for the position that he makes. And secondly, it, it's, if I'm trying to admonish somebody with a homosexual agenda, it's only because I want them to draw closer in a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not because I'm against them as a person. I want to see all my brothers and sisters come closer in the walk with Jesus. Hopefully that's the goal of this show, yeah. is to help everybody come closer in their walk with Jesus. So if, you know, you use Mr. Kathy, if, we, if someone speaks out against a certain thing, you guys mentioned, you know, well, we have to live in a certain way that kind of parallels what we say. How do we do that? Well, I, I think, I mean, well, first of all, you have to do that. You have to have um, a starting point, and that is from the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? For instance, the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery, mm -hmm. the way the Christians, uh, those were the Pharisees, those were the religious, the religious leaders people, yeah. who wanted to condemn her. Our response to her today should be the same response that Christ gave. I don't condemn you. I, I share my love with you. Um, sin, we should be convicted by sin. Yeah but we should not um, condemn people. So and that's I'm how glad I you brought this up. I actually, I can't believe it, Valor. I have this on my piece of paper here <laughs> because it's an interesting story because the truth was she was caught in that's adultery. That's right. right. There was no refuting the fact that right. she was in sin. But it's his and the law response. was also the position of truth. That's the right. law said someone here needs to be executed. Mm -hmm. So the truth 
so to speak, was on the side of the Pharisees That's in every right. way. They could, they could go to the Bible, the Torah, and say, this woman was caught in mm -hmm. adultery, this is exactly what we should do with her, and yet Jesus didn't do anything that they mm. prescribed. Well, he, uh, he offered the opportunity for mm -hmm. those without sin to cast the first stone. Mm. And uh, in that moment of, of divine wisdom in, how to, in settling that issue, uh, I think the truth became crystal clear that uh, uh, really, I mean, some would say it's a, it was a, a real setup to put Jesus to right. the test kind of rather the than spot. the woman. Mm -hmm. on, put, yeah. the, put Jesus on the spot rather than the woman sure. on the spot. And, uh, in to that see moment, just how loving he was, perhaps. And in that moment of wisdom, if he would obey the law or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all walked away not able to convict him of breaking the law, nor her of breaking the law. Hmm. But and, he didn't let her off the and, hook. But he didn't let her off, off the, the hook. hook. Right. Right. We don't have much time here, but I did have kind of a, a second question, which I'll let Chuck take this one. So then what, what is, what, what exactly is Christian love? If you could kind of point to it and say, this is what Christian love looks like, what is that? Well, I think it's trying to, to share, to see Christ in every person that mm -hmm. you meet. Hmm. And That's that good. is really difficult to do many, many times but it is to try to see Christ and to try to bring all of us together closer in a community of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. Nobody is saying that this is an easy walk to walk with Christ, but on the other hand, it's going to make our lives so much better if we can allow ourselves to channel Christ through us and, and be used, you know, it's not about us, it's allowing His glory to channel through us to other people. And again, I want to hear what uh, all of you home there have to say live at LC.com. I do have a verse I want to go out of this segment with. It's not going to be on the screen or anything, but I think it kind of sums up what we're talking about here. It's from 1 John 3, 13 through 15 and verse 18. This is the NIV. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Verse 18, dear children, let us not love with our words or speech, but with actions and in truth. We do have a great show for you today still to come. Pastor Mark Lance will never be the same after taking a trip of a lifetime to Israel. He joins us today with highlights from his first time visit to the Holy Land. You don't want to miss that. And speaking of Israel, Brian Bush is standing by live with an update from the Middle East. Lots of things going on there. Don't want to miss that. And the Bible says or affirms that Christianity is an offense to the world, like Valerie just said. Today we're going to discuss the double offense of Christianity in today's teaching. You don't want to miss that. The Harvest Show continues right now. It is the 1st of August in 2012. Here's what's happening in your world. The United Nations mission says its observers have witnessed government fighter jets opening fire on the city of Aleppo, Syria's largest city. In a briefing today, the UN also confirmed the rebels now have weapons of their own, including tanks. Uh, the situation that concerns us the most is the situation of civilians. There are some civilians who are trapped uh, in the crossfire. There are the others who are seeking uh, refuge and shelter in uh, schools and hospitals and uh, public buildings and safer neighborhoods. There is shortage of uh, food, fuel, water and uh, gas. So on, on all fronts we're extremely concerned about the situation. Turkish authorities are preparing to host up to 100,000 new refugees in camps on the Syrian border. For the 3 million Syrians who live in Aleppo, life is becoming increasingly unbearable as that military siege enters its 11th day. The UN said Sunday 200,000 people had already left that battered city. Hundreds of Greeks from all over Athens and the city's impoverished suburbs lined up at St. Thomas Square today, receiving bags of free food distributed by the extreme far-right Golden Dawn Party. The food handouts were only distributed to people considered by the party to be ethnically Greek and eligible. Golden Dawn maintains one of the reasons for Greece's high unemployment has to do with immigration into the country. 
Party volunteers and members of Parliament distributed plastic bags filled with olive oil, pasta, baby food and milk. Party leaders say they're filling a huge vacuum created by Greece's inability to take care of its citizens. Manila residents are wading through waist-deep floodwaters after Typhoon Saola created waves as tall as palm trees flooding entire neighborhoods. Even the U.S. Embassy compound was forced to close today because of the surging torrents of brown water. Fierce wind and heavy rain from the slow-moving offshore typhoon killed at least 10 people Tuesday after displacing 145,000 others. Typhoon Saola later shifted to blow away from the Philippines after lashing two-thirds of the nation since Sunday. Now Saola has moved north and it's battering eastern Taiwan with wind speeds around 80 miles per hour and gusts close to 100. Some areas of Taiwan have already reported 30 inches of rain with 10 inches in the capital of Taipei. Forecasters predict the storm could dump more than 59 inches of rain in northern Taiwan before moving towards the Chinese coast Thursday. Mudslides triggered by heavy rainfall damaged the East Coast Highway north of Hualien. This morning, authorities closed the highway and evacuated several hundred people from low-lying areas. And eight women badminton players, including the reigning world champions from China, face a disciplinary hearing today. They're charged with trying to throw their preliminary matches at the Olympics to secure a favorable draw. Spectators at the Wembley Arena booed Tuesday when they realized the players were apparently deliberately trying to lose. The doubles pairs are all due to compete in quarterfinals this afternoon. The Badminton World Federation said in a statement it charged the doubles players from China, South Korea, and Indonesia under the players' code of conduct with not using one's best efforts to win a match. The International Olympic Committee says it will allow badminton's ruling body to deal with the controversy. Well, we led with Syria, and certainly that's the big story in the Middle East these days, but there's so much more going on. And to get more about that situation, we go live to Jerusalem and our correspondent, Brian Bush, who joins us via Skype from Jerusalem. And Brian, U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta is there in Israel. Tell us a little bit more about his visit. Well, that's right. He's been here. He's been traveling the country, uh, looking at different defensive uh, areas of the country. He's been having meetings with with the president of the state of Israel, of course, the defense minister Ehud Barak and the prime minister Bibi Netanyahu. His line has been the same, that America uh, wants to see a nuclear-free Iran and that it respects Israel's right to uh, defend itself and to take actions against Iran. That's a little bit of a new development in the stance towards Israel and how it views Iran. But Mr. Panetta is also here in the reason to talk about the developments that are happening so rapidly in Syria. Chuck? And certainly they're in the 11th day of that military siege in Aleppo. What's the latest with the fighting there? Well, uh, again, there's running street battles. The uh, rebels have said that they've secured two more uh, stations, if you will, from the Syrian government, but those cannot be confirmed. The government obviously has the dominant power, uh, as, you, as you just reported, the air power, um, helicopter gunships, uh, as well as fighter planes have been in action. There's also on the ground artillery and tank fire. Uh, their men obviously having the superior training and firepower for this battle. It's going to determine a matter, it's going to be determined by a matter of will. And President Assad himself, I'm trying to stay in line with the camera, sorry, a little windy here where I'm at, um, but President Assad himself saying that the fate of this, that the fate of this battle will determine the fate of Syria. Very ominous words, Chuck. Been with you for about eight years now. I think that's the first I've ever seen that happen, Brian. But I did catch your blog yesterday about the state televised address that Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu gave last night. Tell us what happened. Well, yeah, you know, he, it was very abrupt, Chuck. Um, as I mentioned in the blog, you know, the public here in Israel is, is outraged that the Netanyahu government is seeking to raise taxes because he said himself 
going into this interview, I hate the idea of raising taxes. It was one of his mantras when he was campaigning to be prime minister. But now he's raising the taxes and the social media in particular that I've been looking at, very uh, pointed in its comments towards him. Um, and the other big issue is, is that a lot of military brass, both active and inactive, even reservists here in the Israeli army, criticizing Mr. Netanyahu for what people perceive to be his, uh, his running to attack Iran. A lot of people here feel that Iran shouldn't be messed with militarily unless it's a last resort. But a lot of people are worried that Mr. Netanyahu is going to go ahead and, and carry out an attack. He said strongly last night on air, live television, that it's up to him to decide if Israel will attack Iran, when Israel re will attack Iran, and that the military leaders must do what he says. Very, very interesting words. Chuck? But is there a feeling, Brian, that the possibility of a strike on Iran by Israel is growing? Well, that's perhaps one of the reasons why the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Mr. Panetta, is here right now. He uh, might be here to kind of pull the reins back on, on Mr. Netanyahu, make sure that he doesn't uh, do anything out of coordination with anybody, and again, allow those economic sanctions to take hold in Iran. That's something that needs more time. Chuck? All right, Brian, thank you very much for joining us, and good footwork on a windy day there <laughs> in Jerusalem. When Brian doesn't join us, he has a terrific blog that he updates on Tuesdays and Fridays, and you can access that at harvest-tv.com. We'll talk more about Israel when we come back with Pastor Mark Lance after this on Harvest. This is my home, the old city of Jerusalem. Since 2002, I have been reporting live on The Harvest Show, bringing you the news and sharing my perspective on challenges facing this ancient city. Tune in for Brian's unique perspective on world events and check out his blog only on The Harvest Show. It's the World Pulse Festival 2012 on August 11th. Corey Mann, who do we have? It's gonna be a great lineup. Mercy Me, Peter Furler, Need to Breathe, Britt Nicole, Dara McLean, the Rhett Walker Band, and Manic Drive all on one stage. And as always, folks, admission is absolutely free, but you have to have a ticket. Corey, where do you get that ticket? You gotta go to worldpulsefestival.com. That's August 11th, the World Pulse Festival 2012. Don't miss it. With your monthly gift of $30 to Feed the Hungry, you can provide daily nutritious meals to five vulnerable children who may otherwise have nothing to eat. As a partner in the Every Child, Every Day project, we will periodically send you updates and profiles of children like those you're helping through your monthly support. Children who now have hope. Children who now have a future because someone they don't even know cared enough to reach out. Call 1-888-832-6384 today and make a difference in the life of a little child. Today you can be an answer to their prayer, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Please call right now or visit www.feedthehungry.org to help reach these little ones today with God's love and care. Well, you've heard us say it over and over again. When you come to Israel, you will never be the same. Joining us today is Mark Lance. He is the senior pastor of Christian Center and a first time returnee mm -hmm. of a trip to the Holy Land. Good to see you, Pastor Mark. Great. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Uh, we want to hear your testimony today <laughs> because really, you know, I've experienced it, Valerie's experienced mm -hmm. it, and there really is something special about going to Israel uh, for right. the first time, but any time. What were some of the, uh, the, uh, the things that kind of led you to take this step to, to go yeah. to Israel? Well, everybody that always comes back says that you'll never be the same again. I know that's the phrase that is used mm -hmm. over yeah. and over again. And it's one of those things you hear and think, okay, you know, that sounds good, but it really is true. Mm -hmm. When you go, there is a spiritual experience there that is unlike any other. Mm -hmm. And it's a pilgrimage, it's a journey, 
It's not a vacation. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual journey that I think every believer should take at least once yeah. in their lifetime if the Lord allows that. So, you know, I've just always wanted to do that when the opportunity was presented to us. Right. Obviously, I wanted to jump on that opportunity because... You, you were able to go with, with your wife as well, which is we great. We were, yeah. She was going to join me today, but some sickness got in the way, but yeah. we were able to go together and uh, just a great time of us connecting together, but mm -hmm. in just a great spiritual experience. Okay, so now we there's your wife right there, yes. uh, Crystal. So from a lady's perspective, what was her view of her trip to Israel? I mean, just the same thing. How did it impact her? Well, she was obviously moved spiritually, okay. you know, just seeing, I think, experiencing it together was extremely important Good. for us mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. that. You know, when you go by yourself, obviously, you personally have an experience, but as mm -hmm. a married couple, yeah. it was even even greater, yeah. you know, because we were able to bond together. Yeah. I know one of, the, one of the spots that we went to was Cana, where Jesus right. turned the water into wine. What a great experience there, because we were able to lead couples in renewing their wedding vows. Wow. So my Whoa. wife and Wonderful. I renewed our wedding vows. <laughs> at Wonderful. Cana. And I think yeah. what a what a great place to be able to do that where Jesus was there yeah. at the wedding reception, yeah. did his first miracle there. So, you know, from her perspective together, mm -hmm. it was a great experience, <clears throat> excuse me, as a married couple. Yeah, what a great thing to share. Uh, what were maybe some of the, the, the highlights of the trip or the points in the trip that really impacted you on a deep, deep level? Well, obviously, I would say the number one highlight was visiting the garden tomb, mm -hmm. being there, walking into the tomb where the body of our Lord lay for three days, mm -hmm. but knowing that it's empty, knowing that through the power of his resurrection, we have power, we have victory. And so that was a very memorable day. In fact, the picture right there, we're having a communion service with our uh, group. And that was just a powerful presence that was there that day at the tomb. So that was probably the greatest day. Of course, every day had its own highlights, you know, yeah. with the different places that we visited. Uh, but the Garden of Gethsemane was very, very special. And going to the, the rock that is alleged or supposed mm -hmm. where Jesus actually did pray in the Garden of Gethsemane, poured mm -hmm. his heart out to the Father. So that was the day I think that sticks out in my mind probably above all else. Yeah. I uh, had opportunity to see a number of the photos that you took and it looks like it was really kind of like a working tour for you. <laughs> yes. You're always out there, you're always preaching, you always kind of get the Bible open yeah. and kind of uh, putting the pieces together. You know, we read about the miracles of Jesus or the parables of Jesus or the, the historical walk of Jesus, but to actually be in those locations. Mm -hmm. I know it was something special for me. Uh, and another thing we, we often let people know is that, you know, it's really the Bible's your, your, your tour guide, uh, but the Bible comes alive in Israel. It Did does. you experience that as well? Absolutely. In fact, out of all the takeaways, people will ask, okay, what, what's the greatest thing? What happened the, the most to you? Out of all the takeaways, perspective would probably be the greatest word that I could use. Mm -hmm. It's changed my perspective toward the Word of God, changed my perspective toward preaching, toward teaching the Word of God. Mm -hmm. When you read about the miracles that Jesus performed and then say, I've been there, you know, I've stood on that hill where he multiplied the loaves and the fish and fed the 5,000. I've, mm -hmm. I've been, I've sailed on the Sea of Galilee where he walked on the water. And every one of those places that we had with the people that were there, I tried to remind them, don't look at this just as a historical place or even as a biblical place, mm -hmm. but experience it. What happened here? Mm -hmm. And have that experience yourself. And the Sea of Galilee was a great experience, preaching in the middle of the lake there and just thinking about what happened in these very waters, on these very waters. It was yeah. a real moving experience for everybody. Okay, I don't know how to word this question, so I'll just say it and maybe you can <laughs> okay. read it. Did something, what surprised you the most or was there an unexpected that you didn't expect that happened? I just said I didn't That's know how to work. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, because when, when people, you know, find out you're going to Israel, right. the Middle East, you know, right, right there by Syria, right there by all of the conflict yeah, that's Egypt. going on, mm -hmm. yeah. people always say, why would you do that? You okay. know, are, do you feel safe? And honestly, in the back of my mind, when I went, that was a question that I had. Okay, is it safe there? How will we feel when we get there? Mm -hmm. That was the biggest thing that surprised me, how safe we felt in Israel. There was not a moment in which we felt any sense of insecurity or conflict mm -hmm. whatsoever. And mm -hmm. quite honestly, that surprised me because going, I was not sure how I would feel mm -hmm. because of all that. But when we got there, it was just such a peace and sense of security that we got there. Mm. Uh, 
for friends that are maybe watching today, and uh, I know I was on, on the other side of the camera at one point as well, before having gone to Israel, you know, you, you kind of want to go. You feel sure. every time someone talks about it, you kind of have the stirring mm -hmm. to go. Um, what would you say to them? You need to follow that because I feel it's something that God places in every believer. Mm -hmm. You know, when we got, especially to Jerusalem, I can just say, we felt like we came home, home. Mm -hmm. yeah. if that makes any sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You felt like, you know, here we are on the other side of the world, but when you walk into Jerusalem, it's like spiritually there's a connection that is there. So that stirring that people feel, <laughs> I believe is God drawing them to that connection because this is God's land. Mm -hmm. This is God's people. And there's that, that special sense that you feel when you walk in that I'm home. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where it's all going to wrap up and this is where we belong. So I would say follow that because that's God drawing you to that spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. Now, you were over there in Israel. Were you surprised by the landscape? Like what was shocking to me was that it really looked like the Bible described more than, I mean, 2000 years ago, it still feels that same way. It does, yeah, I was, I was very surprised by that. You mm -hmm. know, seeing the desert, seeing the Bedouins, you know, still yes. living the way right. that they did Intense. with the camels, mm -hmm. you know, getting on the camel, that whole thing. So that did surprise me how many areas are still with that biblical feel and mm -hmm. that biblical look, you know, even walking into Capernaum and seeing the, the ruins of the synagogue. It was just amazing to feel like mm. you were literally walking in Bible times, so to speak. And so I was surprised by that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, with, uh, I'm assuming you were the pastor, the bus pastor right. for, for that <laughs> right. part of the group. Um, what were some of the things you saw in the lives of, of the other folks that you had the opportunity to spend that week with in Israel? You know, we saw a change. They come from everywhere, really. They do. Yeah. And what was so neat is because, um, you know, when we get there, Nobody knows anybody. You know, we're all from different areas of the country, different mm -hmm. churches, different denominational backgrounds and beliefs and so forth. But by the end of the week, people were laughing together, talking together, sharing pictures. There was a real bonding that took place in those eight days that we were there that was just amazing to see how God brought us together. And that just is through experience like the Jordan River, you know, being mm -hmm. baptized, like this picture shows right here, being baptized in the Jordan River yeah. is an experience that I think brings people, number one, spiritually closer to God, but then doing it together brings us closer to each other as well. Mm -hmm. And so I saw a real spiritual bonding take place during that eight days. Yeah. What did you feel about the, uh, uh, the, the tour guides, you know, the, the, the professionals mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that were, that accompany each bus and really kind of lead the tour and I mean, I, I find that I get such a wealth of, of information and uh, a lot of the nuance of, of the culture of the right. biblical times. I, I thought they were f spectacular. They were phenomenal. They really were. I was very impressed with their knowledge of the land, their knowledge of history, but also their ability to connect with the people as well. I liked how our tour guides brought not just the historical standpoint, but the biblical, as far as the experience goes, they brought that out in so many different ways. And so, yeah, I was very impressed. I could not have asked for any better of a tour overall. I mean, Le Cie Tours does an amazing job mm -hmm. from accommodations to travel, to the tour guides, to what the, about food. the food. Yes. You gotta say the food. <laughs> yes, the food is Unbelievable. awesome. Unbelievable, unbelievable. The Mediterranean yeah. diet is one that I think everybody should live on. So healthy, <laughs> so good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, every detail of the tour was just so perfectly put together. And we were very impressed with just every part of it. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us today. Pastor Mark Lance from Christian Center here in South Bend. And I wanna encourage you today, if you feel moved in any way, inspired in any way to go to the land of Israel, there's no better group that you can go with other than Lassie Tours. And Lassie Tours has been bringing uh, pilgrims to the Holy Land for over 40 years now. It really is a trip of a lifetime and you will never be the same once you go once. We've had folks that have gone 10, 12, 15 times. And you think, why would someone go to Israel 15 times? Well, you go once and you'll find out and you'll know why. 1-800-685-3732 is the phone number that you can call right now to get your free tour packet. You can also go to LaCTours.com and uh, sign up for a tour packet to be sent to your house. You see the dates there, November 7th through 16th is our next trip. Love to hear from you today. A lot more coming up on Harvest.
ancient city walls, rich and fertile fields, a place of past and present where history is revealed. Walk the paths of old, a land beyond compare. The shofar sounds the call for people everywhere. My heart will not forget to always speak your name. I'll sing the song of Zion with tender heart proclaim the longing of the ages within the heart of man. The crossroads of the world in God's eternal plan. Israel, Israel, eternal land of promise, desire of my heart. Israel, oh Israel, a land that's like no other. Let all the earth proclaim that when you stand on holy ground, you'll never be the same. God move the hearts of men who in turn move the world. After years of yearning, Zion was unfurled. A homeland for God's people, designed by his own hand. The hope of generations, forever it will stand. Israel, Israel, eternal land of promise, desire. shores of Galilee, from the Jordan Valley up to Jerusalem, the land itself proclaims you'll never be the same. November 7th to 16th, trip of a lifetime to Israel, the land of the Bible, the Holy Land. You'll never be the same when you visit Israel. The Bible just absolutely comes alive. What an incredible land of history and mystery. You know, you gotta go to the phone and get that free information package or go to lessetours.com and we want you to come to Israel with us this November 7th to 16th. Come to Israel, you'll never be the same. Would you like to have a secure source of income for the rest of your life? What if that income was set and would never change no matter what the economy does? 
And at the same time, what if you knew you were changing lives for Jesus? That's right, it's a charitable gift annuity, the amazing part investment and part gift that never stops giving. The rates are much higher than savings accounts or certificates of deposit. It's the perfect way to honor God with your finances and fulfill the Great Commission. If you are over 49 and a half years old and you have at least $5,000, you may qualify. Call us at 1-866-224-2087 or go online to lacy.com and click on Leave a Legacy. This hard to believe opportunity won't last forever, so call while the rates of return are still high. Do it today. When you become a partner in faith with a monthly contribution to Lacey Broadcasting, you participate with us in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through Prayer Line, International Shortwave Radio, Middle East Television, Spread the Word Bible Distributions, World Harvest Television on Direct TV, Lacey's local Christian television stations, and much more. If you're not yet a part of this effort of spreading the Great Commission to the ends of the earth, Consider becoming a partner in faith today with Lacey Broadcasting. Call the number 1-800-365-3732 or visit the partnerinfaith.com website on the screen. You can join hands with us for as little as $25 a month. Please do it today and know that in doing so, you become a vital part of this ministry and reap the benefits of partnership. Welcome back to Harvest, where today we've arrived at part seven of our series, Success as Failure, where today I want to discuss a topic that I've touched on a few times, Valerie mentioned it, and that is the offense of Christianity. What exactly does it mean to say Christianity is an offense? I think it simply means that opposite our westernized idea of Christianity that sees it as something that only brings you know, happiness and assurance and security and so on, it's actually just the opposite. New Testament Christianity is antithetical to every basic presupposition we hold as humans. Why? Well, because, like Chuck said, it's so very challenging. Ever since that day that Jesus relocated from Nazareth to Capernaum, declaring, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near, Christianity has been an offense. Why? Because everyone who wishes to approach Christ must ask the question, what is it I must do to follow? And to this, Christ will respond to every last one exactly the same. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit the very self? If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Again, Whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And it's here that each and every one of us must choose to be offended or to accept Christianity. However, if one does choose Christianity, Christ goes further because the offense of Christianity actually is a double offense. Well, what does this mean? Well, I think as is fairly obvious, the first offense makes itself known right away in Christ's declaration, take up your cross daily and follow me. Here we must choose if we will be offended or not. However, if we decide to accept Christ as Christ, which means accept, accepting him on his terms, there is then a second movement of offense that follows suit. How so? Well, if one accepts Christ, one must then find faith on Christ's terms. And if this one refuses to do so, this will surely offend that one's own self. Let me ask you, how might one Present the offense of Christian love to another. If the one who does the presenting, be not offended if he does not. It's not possible. And it's in this way that Christianity is a double offense. If I choose to love as Christ love, I will offend myself if I don't follow through. Here I'm no longer offended by Christianity. Now the offense is my rebellion to Christ. And we can say that this second offense will present itself. For if I choose to love in Christian love, I will be offended if I do not love in Christian love. Why? 
Because if I'm not offended by not loving and Christian love, then I'm still offended by it. To put it just as simple as I can, for the Christian lover, it's no longer the difficult words of Christ that are an offense. Rather, it's rebellion against Christ that offends the Christian lover. So, how might the Christian lover who has decided to follow Christ on the narrow road rebel? I think by adopting the deus ex machina, the God who no longer demands we take up our cross and suffer for the gospel, the God who simply makes all of our problems just disappear. The worship of this God, I think, is rebellion against Christ. So, if I see Christ for who Christ is, accepting the cost, taking up the cross, and yet I choose to worship him as a deus ex machina, this will offend me in my rebellion, and thus I would offend Christ. To sum this up, the one who refuses Christ is obviously offended by him. However, the one who accept, accepts Christ on terms not set forth by Christ, this one offends their own self, and thus also Christ, and thus also, I think, Christianity as set forth in the New Testament. So, even as there is a double movement of offense, there must also be a double movement by the one who would accept Christ. It's just not enough to not be offended by Christ. One must also move into that place where they're offended if they do not love in Christian love, which demands action. And I think this, this is the seed of faith. Now, of course, as Chuck mentioned, this is a hard teaching. In fact, long ago, many disciples stood before Christ in Galilee, and as they listened to him say things like, if we do not eat of Christ's flesh, we have no life in us. They, of course, did what? They grumbled. So let's take a look at it. This is in John chapter 6. Let's start in verse 60. This is a hard teaching, and who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? Verse 63. The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. Verse 64, yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. Verse 65, he went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. Verse 66, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. I think Christ demands we find faith where faith is in no way given, just like Abraham, who's a great example. And absolutely, as I and many others have said, and I think must be said until exhaustion, to take up the cross and follow Christ is to invite destruction. There is no security at the cross. The cross is nothing short of absolute insecurity. I mean, what did Jesus say? You will be hated by everyone because of me. You will lose your life if you follow me. However, Anyone who wishes to find his or her life will lose it, but anyone who loses their life by taking up the cross will find life, and only then will one be worthy of Christ. So what does Jesus say? Follow me. These are the words of Christ, and yes, these words are full of life, even though they're difficult, yet there are some, in fact, many who do not believe. Yet today, I don't think it's per a lack of belief that these many don't believe. I think it's actually an overabundance of belief that causes these many, you could call them the masses, to refuse to believe. The masses choose to believe in security, thus they don't believe. The masses put their faith in things like the American empire, thus they don't believe. The masses choose to believe that all their doubt has been wholly eradicated, thus they do not believe. And of course, the masses choose to believe in societal order per violence, and thus these masses simply just do not believe. I think it's the many in the masses who refuse to come to that place where those words that Jesus spoke are spoken. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At Christ, or excuse me, at Calvary, Christ united us with God in our very separation from him. Just as Bonhoeffer put it, only a suffering God can save us. Friend, God knows what you're going through today because he experienced it existentially and this is how he heals us. Not because our pain is just taken away, but because we know we have a true friend in Jesus who suffered the same afflictions as us. 
That's the question today I don't think should be, what is God going to do for me or for us? But what are we, what are you, what am I going to do for him? To close, I want to read a passage that we're probably most, most of us are familiar with. Matthew chapter 25, let's start in verse 34. Then the king will say to those on his right, this is Jesus speaking, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when in the world did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did that for me. In the Bible, the topic of healing runs like a red thread. And whether you're ill physically, emotionally, or spiritually, God has healing for you. Our new friends offer this month is Healing in Every Book of the Bible by Dr. Lester Sumrall. Full of encouragement and faith, this book cites examples of the wholeness of man from all 66 books of the Bible, and it's yours free. Just pay a small shipping and handling fee. Call 800-965-3732 or visit harvest-tv.com. Many Christian ministries have desired to bring the gospel of Jesus to Israel, to proclaim his message of God's love to the villages and streets he walked while on this earth. Yet only one Christian network has been broadcasting the message of God's love to Israel for more than 10 years. By God's grace, LaCie Broadcasting has been bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ and the voices of many American ministries to every home in Israel via Middle East television. You can help this great work by becoming a partner in faith for as little as $25 a month. Call today. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent people you save me, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Want to accept Jesus as your personal saviour, or have questions about Christian life? Call Prayer Line at 1-800-365-3732. Well, I'm, I'm standing in my favorite room, my most favorite room in the entire building of LaCie Broadcasting. That is LaCie Prayer Line, where prayer goes up from this place 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you'd like for us to pray with you, intercede on your behalf, or listen to your praise reports, give us a call here at 1-800-365-3732. And now I'm joined by the First Lady of Prayer, that is Patty Palmer. Hi, Patty. Hi. Hi. Yeah, <laughs> I got she, it right. I, I don't want you to, It's you a know. little hard even for me, Valerie, so that's okay. <laughs> no longer Patty Ellis, but Patty Palmer. So what do you have for us? Is today the day you go up into the um, the chapel no, to pray? What no, day? that was Tuesday. Okay. That, that was last night, and so that's just always a great time. And so we want to remember you there. If you ever want us to pray for you in the chapel, just tell the person on the phone that you would like that taken up to the chapel and they'll do that. That's right. And be sure to send in those photos. Email us your photos because, you know, it's just nice to put a, a name, a face, it is, and definitely. put it all together and we can just lay hands on intercessors will pray for you. It doesn't matter if we don't have a picture of you, but it's nice to take it up to the chapel for for the wall of love. That's what it's called? Yes, it oh, is okay. called the wall of love and it's walls really. <laughs> yeah, walls. <laughs> 
<laughs> so what do you have for us? We have several prayer requests we today. We do. Uh, we have Johnny from Alabama whose left foot is swollen and also mm. in pain. Um, one that calls herself No Name, and you know I don't like that, but because that's what she called herself, we will right now. She's homeless in Las Vegas. But we're believing that that's going to change the yeah. name and the home situation. We get, we get uh, quite a few prayer requests for homelessness. Unbelievable. We? About, you know, yeah, to, to unbelievable. find a place to live. And it's always fascinating to me, Valerie, how they get to a phone, because most of them don't even have a cell phone, mm -hmm. you know, and find us yes. so that they can have prayer. We are, I mean, that just means so much. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. means that the Lord trusts us in a way. And mm -hmm. so that is very humbling. And okay. we're, we're believing for these people to find those homes. And we have many wonderful testimonies where they have. Carrie from Texas, uh, her mother is in hospice. Many of you can relate to what that is like. Oklahoma, again, no name, problems in the workplace. Uh, Jim from New York, he needs healing of a broken heart. He didn't give us details, but God knows. Rick from Ohio is losing everything, his home, his car, oh. his family. Mm -hmm. um, but there again, thank God that Rick is calling. You know, right. it, he, he feels so dismayed, but he knows, he knows that God can bring him out of this, and so we're just standing there with him. Prentice from Kentucky needs healing in his neck and spine. He's in terrible pain. Okay, Patty, would you pray? And yes. I'll agree with you. Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, from Johnny with the swollen foot, Lord, yes, Lord, to the homeless in Las Vegas, God, you've got it covered. You are the God who cares. Yes. You are the God who makes a way that where there is no way. Now we pray healing into this body with this in foot situation. We pray for this mother in hospice, Lord, and the family that's round about her. We pray, Father, for you to give them peace as they're going through this difficult time. We pray yes. that her home going, Father, will be glorious for the whole family, that they yes, will Lord. know that she's in that peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Father, for the one that's having problems in the workplace, we know that we spend more time at work than at home in many cases, and we just pray that you'd reverse that situation for yes, her. Lord. Father, make it a pleasant experience as she walks in that door daily. Father, for each of them, we thank you for answering prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we do thank the Lord for answering prayer. That's why we want you to give us a call here at Prayer Line anytime, day or night, by calling 1 800 365 3732, sending an email to prayer at lacy.com, worldharvest.com. And of course, we'd like to receive your letters at 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana 46614. And now back to the studio with Stephan and Drew. Thank you so much, Valerie. You see there are how to connect with us at Prayer Line. That phone number though, 1-800-365-3732 is also where you can call to get our uh, gift to you this month if you've never connected with us before, our new friends gift, Healing in Every Book of the Bible by Dr. Lester Sumrall. It's a great little book. It talks about the origin of sickness and disease, what is healing, uh, the biblical reasons for illness, uh, the healing covenant, why some people are not healed, and then healing throughout the Bible, where Dr. Sumrall picked a verse from every book of the Old and New Testament that deals with God's thoughts towards healing, whether it be spirit, soul, and or body. 1-800-365-3732 is the number for you to call to get this free gift if you've never connected with us before. We do ask for $5 to cover shipping and handling so we can get it right to you as well. And Drew, uh, with your series, uh, we've, we've still got a few, uh, a few to go. Well, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll it, see. Was an, it was an open-ended open -ended. series yeah. when we started, so definitely be another one on Friday and we'll just kind of see how far it goes, I very much appreciate, uh, you know, all the folks who have written or called in. Um, you know, I, I'm glad that it, I'm maybe encouraging some people to kind of go back and take a look at something. And mm -hmm. I had a thought here to close that I think kind of goes along with our opening chat is kind of along with what uh, I was just saying. And it's uh, in Matthew 7, obviously, this is mm -hmm. still part of the Sermon on the Mount, verse 20, where Jesus said, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Mm -hmm. As what? As obviously being followers of Christ. And I think many times today we look at what are the fruit of a Christian or right. a believer or a disciple of Christ. You know, maybe it's, well, they have a sound marriage or, you know, they, they don't smoke cigarettes or drink alcohol or, you know, you go down generally the line. Generally nice guys. They're generally a nice yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's not corrupt in his business practices. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying any of those things are, 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 are bad things. Right. You know, that, that's all nice and good. But I think... If we look at Christ and say, what is the fruit of being like Christ? I think it goes so far beyond those things where it's loving 
and forgiving your enemies, actually going to the point where you're praying for them. You know, yesterday I, mm -hmm. I, I mentioned, you know, we talked about, will the Son of Man find faith when he returns to the earth? We kind of laughed before the program where I asked, posed one of the questions to you, and you said, probably not. You know, the idea of, well, will the Son of Man find to find, uh, return to the earth to find such a faith where someone who's fallen Christ, their only eternal torment would be the idea yeah. of repose in heaven while their enemy burns in hell, or who would only beg for mercy for their enemy. Right. I mean, I think that's the level that Jesus is at yeah. on Christian love. Now, none of us are going to reach this level that Jesus attained, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean we don't attempt to. Right, right. You know, we, we have to do our best to want to be like Christ, then let's try and be like Christ, and that goes far beyond basic ethics and morality as society mm -hmm. defines it. Yeah, it becomes very crystallized in how do you respond when prodded or hurt or wounded or betrayed? How do you respond to those that would seek to treat you uh, malevolently and with, with malicious intent? Mm -hmm. How do you respond to that? And those true tests always come when you don't, when, when you know, it's not when you're in your nice Sunday outfit. It's always when, yeah. you know, you're totally caught off guard. Absolutely. Love to hear what you've got to say and think. And as uh, Drew mentioned, you can connect with us live at lacy.com. You see our prayer line there as well. We'll see you tomorrow. Faith is an act, not an idea. Dr. Lester Sumrall built his ministry on faith, and he taught that faith requires action. When we want something from God, we must take action. Those of you who are partners in faith with Lacey Broadcasting know what I'm talking about. Partners in faith are provided the resources they need to build faith that moves mountains. Partners in faith make a monthly investment into the soul-winning outreaches of Lacey Broadcasting. Partnering with LaCie Broadcasting is an opportunity to build your faith to a level you could not accomplish by yourself. It's when thousands of believers join together that ordinary people accomplish extraordinary goals. Take this journey of faith in partnership with LaCie Broadcasting. Join thousands of like-minded partners in faith. Find out more about how to become our partner in faith. Call us today at 1-800-365-3732. God will perform great and mighty things. It's that time of year. The sun's out, the flowers in bloom, and the great outdoors are calling. All you need to enjoy those summer activities is that extra boost in energy. And here at Making Healthy Choices, we've got an all-natural solution, Mineral Concentrate, a fulvic acid supplement to balance your mineral deficiencies and give you that spark to enjoy your summer. Order yours by logging on today to mhclife.com, where you'll find not only great health products, but essential health tips as well on diet, exercise, and more. Log on today, mhclife.com. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.